and it didn't change size, shape, or whatsoever. And it just stayed there in the sky. And it was the most curious thing I've ever seen. Um, I, I don't want to sidetrack us too much with my with my theoretical tangent. So I'll I'll let you go into the the fourth UAP sighting. Yeah, yeah, that's how we started with the military stuff. Because the fourth sighting, uh, I actually did call the military air traffic controller, but I will first give you the background of the fourth time. Uh, this was uh, back in 2010. I was flying the 737 uh, as a co-pilot, and we were flying in the evening, late evening, from Amsterdam to the net in the Netherlands to the southern part of Spain. Um, and we were just the sun had already set, and you could still see the horizon and some clouds below. And uh, basically, the whole sky was turning from yellow to orange to to dark blue, and uh, there was not much cloud activity there was some lower clouds far below and we were crossing into spanish airspace over the pyrenees and we still had roughly 55 minutes or one hour of flight to go and my colleague a former military uh, uh pilot uh, a very experienced really down-to-earth guy he's asking me if i see the same object straight ahead and what i think it is so i don't know what i was doing i was probably doing the flight plan or a uh, fuel check and i look out and straight ahead really straight ahead of our airplane I see a little dot. Uh, it was like it's very, it's very hard to say uh, what it looked like or how far it was, but it was just a, a, a solid object backlit, which was extremely far, far away and extremely high. It was, let's say, uh, the size, uh, sorry, the shape of a, of a cigar or, 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 uh, yeah, let's say, a cigar shaped. And I was looking at it and I realized it was really weird because uh, we were on a direct course. Uh, after entering Spain, uh, the air traffic controller cleared us on a direct course all the way to the runway of Malaga. So that means we left the airways and there was no other traffic uh, basically around us. On top of that, we were flying very high. We were flying at 41,000 feet, which is uh, much higher than most commercial mm. airplanes are flying. Um, and whatever it was, it was much higher than we were flying. Um, an estimated, uh, let's say, 60, 70, 80,000 feet which doesn't make any uh -huh. sense because there's hardly any traffic in the world that can fly that high, let alone um, uh, yeah, large, large commercial airplanes. So we were really wondering what we were looking at. And it stays ahead of us, exactly ahead of us, completely stationary. So meaning it didn't, me it didn't move relative to our airplane. It didn't move uh, vertically. It didn't change shape. So we were flying uh, close to the speed of sound all the way to the south. And whatever it was, it didn't get bigger or smaller. And that really made us wonder what it was. So first, the first action was uh, calling the air traffic controller, the Madrid air traffic controller. He's basically uh, taking care of the upper airspace in Spain. And he was really surprised. He said, no, there's, there's absolutely no traffic, uh, known traffic uh, ahead of you guys. So what, what do you see? So I told him, well, there's something flying ahead of us. Uh, it looks quite, quite big. And we were just wondering what it was because out of curiosity. And about two minutes later, he comes back to me over the radio. He says, uh, um, uh, military air traffic control wants to know about your sighting as well. Can you please contact them on this and this frequency? So I tuned in the other frequency and I was talking directly with the military air traffic control, Spanish military air traffic controller. Uh, and this guy was really interested. He wanted to hear everything that we saw. And he also confirmed that they didn't have anything, no known traffic whatsoever over Spain on their radar. A military air traffic control, they have a, a primary radar, which is basically sending out radar signals and showing everything solid in the airspace contrary to commercial uh, radars but he said no there's no no traffic ahead of you and there's no weather balloons because apparently they track weather uh, balloon activity as well and uh, yeah he, 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 he was really curious to to see what we saw so that was really uh, interesting to see and then after about 55 min minutes of flying we were finally getting close to malaga all the way to the south of spain and uh, we made a left turn and we descended into the clouds and all the time I still saw the same object uh, in the same geographical position. And it must have been by that time over Africa, somewhere over Africa. And it didn't change uh, size, shape or whatsoever. And it just stayed there in the sky. And it was the most curious thing I've ever seen. And this is the first time, also the only time, unfortunately, I was able to uh, to take a picture of it. And uh, I'm, I'm the first to admit it's a completely underwhelming picture because basically you see a sky with a, with a really small dot. Uh, but in the context of us seeing it for over an hour and the fact that we were flying already very high and it must have been extremely high in the atmosphere, um, it makes it strange, absolutely strange. 
What was the the tone of the military guy that you were speaking to during this conversation? Was he surprised, overwhelmed? Was he nonchalant? What did it feel like talking to him? Uh, or it her, sounded whoever like he it was. was. It, it was a him. It, it was. He sounded very proactive, very curious, and very businesslike. Uh, he didn't ridicule anything. Uh, he didn't laugh about it. Uh, but he was. He was. Uh, uh, absolutely curious to 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 find out what we were seeing, and uh, it was 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 uh, yeah professional. Um, actually, in the cast, last couple of years, I um, I've seen some other things burning up in the atmosphere as well, and I've called air traffic control to ask if something was was happening. Later on, we found out it was just very mundane, something very uh, very uh, uh, simple that was uh, that was burning up, but. The few times that I've called air traffic control and asked them if there was any military activity, they just shrugged it off. They were completely uh, uninterested. And that's the biggest thing in retrospect that surprised me with the uh, uh, with the object over Spain. That, uh, both the civil and the military air traffic controller were uh, really professional and they, 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 they didn't ridicule it. They, they believed us and they just wanted to know what we've uh, uh, been seeing. So it wasn't changing shape it stayed that cigar shape the whole time you saw it for about the hour wasn't seemingly changing elevation staying pretty much at the same spot is there a possibility that it could have been so far away that maybe it wasn't tracking you but you just weren't getting close enough to change the shape of it yeah, that's uh, yeah, ex exactly. It could be two things. It was either um, ahead of us at a fixed distance, just constantly moving together with us, basically tracking us. Uh, so that could have explained the fact that it didn't change shape or size. Um, but it seems very unlikely because we were on the direct course. And uh, yeah, besides that, it doesn't make any sense if something just stays ahead of us for, for over an hour. Or the second option is is that it was so far away. So incredibly far away that the relative uh, change in distance from us and, and the object was just uh, neg negligible. Then again, if it was the second option, if it was uh, an object that was extremely far away, it must have been both huge. I mean, we're talking about uh, massive size and extremely high. Uh, we're talking about really the upper upper uh, edges of the atmosphere, mm. which is something that that that's weird. But then again, uh, not, 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 nothing really makes sense. I just don't know what it, what it could have been. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm just completely clueless about uh, about anything. Yeah. W whatever the source of it is, if something is staying the same shape, size, and altitude for a long period of time, and let's assume it's not the further away option where it's, it, you know, it, it's it's maintaining the same exact distance between itself and the the plane could you like is that an uh something that could happen incidentally or is that indicative of a system that has tracking capabilities like uh, whatever the source of it is like something that could stay on a target exactly for one hour straight well, it's uh, yeah, I, I guess it could be, um, especially since a lot of uh, airplanes are flying across tracks or, or uh, airways. If you know the airways, uh, you can just follow the same airway. And especially um, if you analyze a lot of traffic over time, you could basically see what kind of uh, routes uh, are normally being flown by airplanes. Um, so in that case, you could track something, maybe even a drone or something could, could basically track it. Uh, this case, we were flying on a direct route. So that was a pretty random route. That, that's, that's, um, that's not a known route. And then again, uh, if you track something, it would make more sense to me to fly behind it. Um, and the altitude doesn't really make any sense. You know, I, I guess if it would have been something, let's say a drone or, or anything else that would that would track us, that was that would fly together with us in in, in the same distance or uh, sorry, same uh, um, uh, bearing, um, it wouldn't fly that high. I, I would I would expect something to fly at the same altitude or lower. Uh, but then again, nothing really makes sense on what we saw there. So um, I, I've I've no clue. It uh, it could be, it could be. 